This is Talk Star Wars. The official podcast at talkstarwars.co.uk Hello everyone and welcome back to Talk Star Wars, the official podcast talkstarwars.co.uk. I'm Mark. I'm Stephen. And I'm Rob. And the rule of two has been abolished. We saw uh, three again. Do you see what I did we there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm so impressed with myself. I apologise. Um, <laughs> you should be. You mentioned the. I did. Word. I did. We can't speak his name. There is something we need to touch on. Something prequel related later on. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, we got. A, we've. I nearly swore. We got a jam-packed, a gosh golly jam-packed schedule this evening. So I think we're probably. Let's just do a quick catch up, and then we can dive into it. Um, right. Steve, welcome back. Hello there. We missed you last week, mate. I yeah. know. Oh, I don't even remember what I was doing. It wasn't no. non-here talking about Star Wars. That I do know. No. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we yeah, noticed. That's definitely true. And there's history, <laughs> historical record of this. <laughs> it's all out there in the ether. Five without me. Yeah. We got. We just about scraped by, mate. People missed you, though. Yeah. Well, Rob, how's your week well, been? Um, good. It's been been all right. It's been a kind of... Well, it, I've been ploughing through a uh, video backlog um, for reasons that are quite dull and not worth going into. Um, but basically, I've had, I've had a fire lit under me for getting through what I've been working on. Uh, thankfully, I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, I'm almost through my entire video backlog just in time to make some more. So that'd be nice. <laughs> you have been doing some reading as well, mate. Reading? I have, yes. Yes. Oh, you saw it? that tweet then? I saw it, indeed. Yeah, finished it on the train this uh, train into work this morning. It's good, isn't it? It's brilliant. It's really, really good. Steve, we're talking about Bloodline, the, the new book. Oh yes, we mentioned that a few weeks ago. Yeah, yes, it's really. I've got to mention, Mark, Superb. that I've started doing videos again on my own YouTube channel, Calistine. Oh, super. And uh, I've, I've I've finished the. Hopefully, I've applied to Guinness for a world record on the insect hotel I've just built. Yeah, did nice. you get a final number on your holes? 3,948 3, holes. Wow. All drilled in... I did it in about 15 hours over about a week. I did Man. it like an hour and a half. Blimey. That's a lot of work, isn't it? I, oh, lot. my God. I burnt out so many drills. If you're interested, just go on YouTube and put biggest insect hotel and you'll see it there. Yeah. Um, but I appreciate all the watches I can get. I've seen yeah, it it's, and it's, it's really impressive. Yeah, I had a look at uh, one of the videos. I, I don't know if I've seen them all. I've seen, definitely seen at least one of them. Because you've done it in four parts, right? Yeah, it's the latest yeah. one. Yeah, the I think final. I might have seen. I think I might have seen the latest one. I'm not 100 sure. I've definitely it's seen all, at least one. I've definitely seen some of them. About halfway through, I thought i have bitten off more than I can chew here because my I had calluses. Oh, the drill <laughs> burnt out. Oh, I got Fine. electrocuted. Wow, <laughs> all for it's the, not fun. All to build yeah, a little no, geonosis in your back garden. Yeah, I had repetitive strain injury from like the pillar drill going up and down. Oh, but it's all done now. So please yeah, go in there and support me. I need all the watches I can get because it's all for charity. And reconstructive charity, surgery. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, if you're yeah. if you're listening to this on YouTube, there will be a nice little card pops up to Steve's channel Ooh. now. Oh, yeah. So you have to know what that is. The future is here. Yeah. It's amazing. Right, let's get into some Star Wars shaped yes, things, shall we? Let's do Star Wars stuff. Yeah. That's um, in our little announcement section this week, we've got a couple of really important birthday boys, Mr. George Lucas, and today, as we record, is Peter Mayhew's birthday. So, wow. happy birthday, wow. gentlemen. It was the creator's <laughs> birthday. Nice. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> that was good. That, it was George's birthday on Saturday. So yeah. That was George Lucas. That wasn't Chewy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a terrible George Lucas then. <laughs> yeah, I have to pick you up on a little thing. You actually said "Merry Birthday." It's a subtle, it's an accent thing, but uh, no, you did good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's more of a regional dialect. Yeah, it's, it's a dialect thing. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> Google so it's Translate, mind. mate. And this, yeah. So, well, happy birthday to them both. Yeah, happy birthday to the esteemed gentleman. Right, we've got a couple of little thank yous to put out as well. Uh, thank you to Paula McCluskey and thank you to Daniel Palmer for becoming Talk Star Wars supporters this week by taking advantage of our subscriber program. Uh, more details on how you can get involved with that later on. Um, thank you That's very awesome. much. It's greatly, greatly appreciated. I don't think people realise, because uh, obviously when, you're, when you, you know, you've got a few thousand regular listeners, people think, Oh, they must be earning money. And Rory, we've mentioned this before. 
but it costs you particularly because it's your site it costs you hundreds and hundreds to run and you get barely a fraction of that back so like any support like this is just awesome yeah i feel it, like i should be playing soft violin music here just, like. a, just a small violin <laughs> just, yeah just two pounds a month for <laughs> i mean you definitely do it for love but, i'm gonna like, put a video of me on online in slow motion oh, black oh, and white can we please do that that sounds incredibly <laughs> funny <laughs> this man needs a new home I will happily narrate it for you if you just give me what just you know you know I'm like I'll do anything I'll record anything. Yeah, you will. You do anything for money. We know that. We can yeah. have you sitting at the side of the road in a Jedi smock oh, with, oh. with a hand cut off in with the a rain. Sign saying, Mark, can we please do this? <laughs> we'll force push for food. Yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, we're wandering dangerously close to after dark side territory, so yeah. we're also wandering dangerously close to somebody stealing our idea. So let's. Yeah. Uh, Let's cut all leave of that us, out. Leave some surprises, yeah. <laughs> all right, so thank you, Paula, and thank you, Daniel, for your contributions. It's greatly appreciated. Very much um, so, thank and you. And also, like to just one last thing in announcements, um, just like to welcome Chris White to the Facebook page. It's growing slowly. Welcome, Chris. But we're going to give any, as long as it's manageable, we're going to give everybody that joins our Facebook group or our Facebook page a personal welcome. So thank you, Chris. Greatly appreciated. Good to have you on board, welcome, mate. Welcome, Chris. All right. Welcome. Some reviews. Rob, cool. over to you, old chap. All right, mate. Did you want me to do the little announcement at the beginning as well? Oh, yeah. Yeah, go on. No, no, you do that, mate. Go on. Yeah? Enjoy. All right. So this is this is one of those awesome pieces of news that I think anybody who, who appreciates podcasts will understand why this is so cool, right? So we are now officially a five-star rated podcast on iTunes because enough of you wonderful, wonderful listeners took the time – and the energy to go on iTunes and give us reviews. So we are so, so grateful for that. That is awesome. Deeply Thank you grateful. very, very Thank much. Thank you very much for that. And um, two such reviews uh, are new this week. One is from Delsky. Hello, Delsky. If you're a fan of Star Wars, you'll love this podcast. Presenters who have real passion for the media, in-depth discussions, and thoughtful speculation, news, and loads more. One of my favorite podcasts. Mm. That is... That's amazing, Wonderful, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that yeah, is great. great. Thank, really high praise and kind words. Thank you, Delsky. And yes, Adolf Hitler Delsky. next, isn't it? Oh, no. <laughs> no, it's Ads Hillier. <laughs> I need to put my glasses on. You do. Really do. <laughs> Ads Hillier, friend of the show. <laughs> yeah, and also keep up with the news because that dude is dead. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know that. I, I, think fa- <laughs> I think we're fairly sure at this point. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Ad Seven Hillier writes. Now witness. Do you want me to? Yeah, do Palpatine pal- this up. Palpatine it up. Yeah. Or Palpatino it. <laughs> <laughs> God, that's I'm asking pal- a lot. I'm, I'm Palpatining it up, okay. and Palpatino will have to be safe for special occasions. I'm afraid because it is very hard on my voice. <laughs> um, not that Palpatine isn't, to be honest. Right. Let's uh, now witness the power of this fully operational battle podcast. Uh, I mean station. <laughs> <laughs> That's if you like Star Wars, then you'll love listening to Mark, Steve, and Rob discuss the latest news, theories, and general happenings in our favorite galaxy far, far away. Get on it. The Force is strong with this one. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. <laughs> what a nice, what a nice couple of comments. That's brilliant. It's That's awesome, isn't it? It's really great. Thank I like you, the way Ed's is using our uh, our sign off yes. catchphrase as well. That's something yes. pretty cool. It's wonderful. That's great. Well, we haven't heard the last from Ed's because in listener comms, our first comment is from. Ads as well on Twitter at Adsilia. Um He's uh, he's written thanks, Mark. Hi, Mark. Thanks for dealing with the mammoth question on the last podcast. It'll be good to, to hear the three of you discuss part two. Um, I think actually we did part two last week, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Of Ads question, so he's thrown us another one. I think. Um, as always, hearing you guys consider various theories has resulted in more questions. This time it regarding. To me. Yeah. Slippery slope. Oh, not the lightsaber again. Yeah, the lightsaber again. <laughs> Regarding Anakin's lightsaber again, it. I have a follow-up query. Um, we understand that Anakin is a child of the Force, possibly the first one. More on that from me later. Um, therefore, his lightsaber is unique as it would have been the only one to have been created by a child of the Force. Um, mm. Does it? Does this make it more powerful than other lightsabers? And as Darth Vader... He uses it still initially in Revenge of the Sith. And then after the battle with Obi-Wan, he loses it. Right, this is something I'm going to address immediately. Um, Ads carries on. I believe his replacement of red lightsaber was created for him by the Emperor. Um, So, importantly, again, not him. Therefore, 
the blue one, I believe, is unique. Darth Vader created the red one himself. I did some research after I read um, Ad's question, and okay, it wasn't the Emperor that created it. it the Emperor right. may have created the synthetic crystal that's in it, but mm-hmm. Vader actually built the lightsaber himself, according to okay. the um, Star Wars wiki. That is indeed canon. Yeah, that is canon. So, um, yeah, I don't know. This, I think there might be something to what Ads is saying about the crystal, because the crystal called so. to the child, to him, the chosen one, um, yes. and the synthetic crystal inside the red lightsaber has got no properties other than creates that blade. So. Yeah. Anyway, back to his question. Okay. Obviously, the Skywalker lightsaber calls to Ray, yep. who may also be a child of the Force, which I firmly Potentially. believe. Um, Potentially. It would be great to have your thoughts on this. Promise I'll try and think of a non-lightsaber related question in the future. As ever, superb <laughs> shows and keep up the good work. Thank you. Promises, so, promises. Is that the same lightsaber? That's Darth one. That's the one that you could control the length on? Yes. I That's heard about this. Did we yes. talk about this? Maybe we did. Maybe. What's that, we sorry? Do. You can you can control the length on that one, can't mm-hmm. you? Well, you can, it says you can alter the blade on the wiki. I don't right, know if that okay. necessarily means the length or the thickness or... Yeah, I don't know. God. Um... I'm not sure, but it, it, I've, I should have broken this question down, really, and I haven't, so I've failed myself. But You're do we fat. think do we think this lightsaber, the Skywalker lightsaber, is calling to Ray specifically because she's a child of the Force? Is that what's happening with that crystal? Steve, do you want well, to take this one first? It's an interesting concept. I, I, it's all it's all feasible to me. I mean, mm. especially this is Darth. This is Anakin's we're talking about, right? This is Anakin's, yes. yeah. Yeah, I think that sounds perfectly feasible to me. I mean, especially he's, he is a child of the Force and he's made it by hand and we still mm-hmm. don't know the exact nature of her relationship with him and or Luke or anyone else. So it's feasible, I guess. Yeah, fair enough. Rob, what's your take? My take is I think what the lightsaber represents, I think, is on the one hand, it's easier to wield... No matter, how, no matter your power in the Force. Obviously, more powerful Force users can wield it more easily. But I think the fact that it's so built by somebody who's so powerful in the Force maybe makes it easier to work with, mm. which would also explain why Finn could wield it um, semi-comfortably. Yeah. He's had some training in weapons of that nature. He hasn't you know, lopped one of his arms off or anything like that during the course of the film. So it's it makes me wonder if there's something to that where like the the lightsaber is sought after because it's the swiss you know, watch of lightsabers more easy, yeah it's maybe more easily more crystal. easily wielded maybe that crystal is as some sort of you know sort of ethereal kind of yeah well maybe. That, was, that was my take on it I, I like where rob's coming from that this might be the the engineering that's gone into the skywalker lightsaber was guided by the force so it's yeah the perfect mm. The perfect design, it's well balanced and it's the right size and everything. Yeah, but Rather on the downside, than, I think it's probably cursed. <laughs> well, that's what I, I've used that term a lot. I think mm-hmm. I mean narratively cursed rather than in universe. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I agree. I think that's definitely the. I think I'm. I would use that same distinction. Yeah, I mean, you do. You have different grades of like diamond. You've obviously got different grades of these crystals because we know that because of Kylo's one is is fractured. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, is this like the purest crystal out there? That's entirely and it, possible. And it's kind of, it, it processes the force more purely. Maybe. Well, maybe. The way I read this, the the in-universe explanation for how the Jedi come across their crystals, it seems to me like the crystals select, almost like Harry Potter's wands, you know, the crystal selects mm-hmm. the Jedi so the Padawans yeah. are called to, and then they have this experience with the crystal before it goes into the weapon. So the fact that it's called to Anakin, a child of the force, and yeah. then it's calling to Ray points could well to be. her yeah. being a child of the Force. That and that is, I think, is what we're seeing. Maz's reaction is very yeah. much built around that yeah. interaction between Ray and the lightsaber. Is her realizing, well, this called to Anakin. Now it's calling to you. There's this is significant. Her, yeah, I think her that's emphasis true. on that, that is significant. Whether she's a child of the Force or not, I think that's definitely true. Yeah, I just hope that they have sort of read into this like we are. And there is some intention there and deliberation and, you know, yeah. and it is actually a story behind a lot that we've suggested because that would be awesome, wouldn't it? And it, I hope it just doesn't get sort of 
I just over and, and not mm. talked about because that's the kind of stuff that makes this really interesting. Yeah, yeah. I hope they also don't get. I don't. I don't mind them going in a similar direction to the Harry Potter one chooses the wizard stuff, but I hope they're not so overt with it that they are in the Harry Potter universe. Yeah, it has to be subtle, doesn't it? Yeah, it can't be like, oh, the saber chooses the Jedi, because they'll just get laughed out of the cinema. Yeah. Because people just go, oh, yeah, just yeah, like Harry Potter. They've never taken though, any time to address that, have they? In no. The, um, there, there might be something that they'll be able to, information they can decant in Luke's training of Rey. Sure, yeah. They might be absolutely. able to tell that story. I wonder if the like if the the crystals aren't some sort of tuning fork and they kind of focus the force from the universe around the Jedi into a more focused if you're mm. holding that lightsaber it's kind of focusing the your your force ability and the force into you mm. I seem to th- seem to recall the legends canon making that very much kind of implied in hmm. previous works so like some of the novels and stuff especially the ones that center around people either building their own lightsabers a lot of the stuff that centers around the jedi academy era when luke's first starting to take apprentices and le- and teach them padawans rather and sort of improve their force skill there's a lot of implication that that's the case that's so it's entirely possible so it's know. like a lightsaber is almost like where humanities meet science it's like spirituality meets science in that one iconic weapon isn't it? yeah and you can see it in um you know in some of the in some of the films and some of the tv work and things like that where people the best kind of fighters almost have an this almost an extension of their arm you know it's almost an, an extension of one of their limbs they can just wield it so effortlessly yeah, yeah. like obi-wan's Ooh. great for that yeah that's good well hopefully ads hopefully we've covered some of those elements there that i'm not i don't mean to be um dismissive of the Darth Vader lightsaber but I think with regard to uh, it wasn't built by the Emperor it was built by Vader and I don't think it has any of the spiritual elements that the Skywalker lightsaber had the only thing I I believe is that Kylo salvaged that crystal for his own weapon okay right Hmm. should we do should we move on to Anthony's email I will if you'd like to fluff it for a couple of seconds because I've scrolled down right through the notes <laughs> oh yeah i see why you've done that yeah do you want me to yeah, just jump to jenkins via email yeah that's it so uh i reckon that there will be crucial information and plot points in rogue one that directly impact episode eight think about who is directing episode eight and his ability to tell an excellent story running both in the past and the future and then looper mentioned in brackets mm-hmm. i reckon rogue one is going to be far less standalone than they are making us believe more on this in my story oh, theory later. That's you, Mark, isn't that's it? That's me, so, yeah. Sorry, that was italicised, but it didn't survive the pasting-in process. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, there's just one more bit after that. It's oh, cool. sorry, yeah. I should also add, keep up the great podcast, and I'm enjoying it a lot. Thank you very much. Although, let's get one thing straight. You're the prequels suck. You should tell the new guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man>. D-Rob, <laughs> Anthony hath spoken. <laughs> All right, well... Anthony, if you're listening, um, that's the fine. You're always right. You are, you are very welcome to feel that way. Um, and, uh, and to be clear, I've never said that all of the prequels are great. I just love them because they're Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, Anthony th- is a listener and they're always right by default. Yeah. So that's I, fine. I Again, almost I didn't put that second part right. in. I almost didn't put that second part in. I thought I'd give Rob a free pass on that one. but That's fine. I like I'm, the way. Big, I'm, a, I'm a big boy, Mark. I can handle myself. That's yeah, you're right. certainly not the new boy anymore. Um, well, that's it. <laughs> No, exactly, yeah. The thing that I've, I've learned by talking to you guys is that the actual stories in the prequels are not bad. If you read the it's book, dialogue go, that's oh weak. my God, I wish they'd make a film of this. Yeah. yeah. It's all the it's all the horrible acting and the, and the awkwardness and the, the over long themes that's and down. not moving cameras and all that stuff. It, that, yeah. That's what ruined it. The actual stories are great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they were marred. They, they had definitely had their issues but i would argue that return of the jedi had its issues and you know, oh yeah what film That's is Peter. perfect what film is exactly. perfect? um empire Glo- as near as damn empire, it. Um, empire, empire strikes back <laughs> yeah actually ever, um, empire's pretty bloody good yeah i need yeah. to well, just address that, that. <clears throat> let's just address that mid paragraph that i reckon rogue one is going to be far less standalone than okay. making us believe i think he's right i've made a note there to say more on this later in my snoke theory because 
Okay. Initially, I thought when I read Anthony's email, I thought um, I don't. I really don't know. I really. I thought standalone means standalone. Rogue One sets up a new hope. I can't imagine there being anything that would leak over into um, further. Yeah. Episode eight, but as yeah. I was do- putting together this new theory about the Snoke origin. Okay. Um, I started to think, oh, actually, there might be something that ties the two together, um, yeah. which yeah. which is about Anakin's trying to repair his body using the Force and the Bacta. So that, okay. re- remember those. We'll come back to that when we do the Snoke thing later on. But I think that might be an element that Anthony yeah. sort of hit on here, that, that they'll sow the seeds in Rogue One that this is a part of canon, and then in Episode Eight. They might expand on it a little bit with the Snoke origin, but I mean, other than a flashback in Episode Eight to to sort of flesh out Snoke's backstory, this is the perfect opportunity to do it, isn't it? Yeah. So why not? I've got the opportunity to build a history that wasn't there with the original um, three. Yeah, um, we need to be clear that Pablo has said that Snoke is nowhere near um, Rogue One. He, mm. he has said that categorically. Um, yeah, but they've lied before. But I do think that I don't think they're going to lie. I don't think they're going to lie again. But you know, I wouldn't rule it out. Um, but I, I but, think that there might be they'll introduce mechanics that can set up an explanation in. You know, they'll introduce a language for us. Elements, you know, like in episode five, we started seeing Luke use telekinesis, which we hadn't seen in A New Hope. That was a new yeah. thing. And so I think they might sow the seed in Rogue One for something new, like Anakin trying to heal himself with the Force, and then that will pay off in Episode Eight when Luke yeah. explains to Ray how Snoke has survived all these years. Oh, okay, yeah. That's the that's where we're going with that, but we'll we'll talk about that a bit more later. So, all right. mm. yeah, Anthony, thanks for your email. Yeah, um, thanks, Anthony. We look forward to hearing for, from you again because that's some really interesting stuff that you brought up there. Yeah. Okay, Rob, do you want to take this email from the Philippines? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, so this is from Carr Rolding. Um, Hi, guys. I'm Carr from the Philippines. I've been listening to your podcast for a while now, and I must say I've become a big fan. You have great taste, Carr. <laughs> uh, in, in your latest episode, Scruffy Looking Nerf Herders, you theorized about Han Solo's abandoned shipment for Jabba. The theorized that Han Solo's abandoned shipment for Jabba were slaves, which you were supposed to deliver to the Empire. I think this is a nice theory and it puts the event in a different light and it certainly speaks much of Han being inherently heroic and not just a greedy smuggler who doesn't much care about anything or anybody. Uh The only problem, the only problem about this theory is that it's been established, or I think it had, that he dropped the shipment in Greedo's words at the first sign of an Imperial cruiser, which probably rules out the empire as the intended recipient of the shipment. I think the slavery angle still works though. And I'd love to see that explored in the planned Han Solo solo movie. On another somewhat related note, Chewbacca was bound to Han on account of a life debt, presumably after Han ch- saved Chewie from slavery. That's absolutely true. Mm-hmm. I think we did cover that one at the time, but uh, we did. No, yeah. absolutely, Carl's absolutely right. Um, oh, so this is uh, sorry. This is an intro to the next bit of the question. So I thought that was a statement in itself. If this is an, if this is an honor code strictly adhered to by Wookiee culture, I'm wondering why wasn't this the case with the child Wookiee saved by Ezra in the first episode of Star Wars Rebels? Or for that matter, all of the Wookiees liberated by the Ghost Crew in that episode. Any thoughts? Sorry for the long email. Please keep up the good work, and I look forward to future episodes. Car, thank you very much, Car. Yeah, that is thank awesome. you, Car. Nice that's... to know we've got people listening in the Philippines. That's exciting. That's a, and that's a wonderful country. I've been there. It's I love the Philippines. Superb. I'm a big Asia fan. What the band? Anyway, <laughs> yeah, that too. Yeah. Yeah. Lay down your arms. Why not? <laughs> So is it? Yeah. Oh, someone's just gone past on a speeder bike. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, sorry about that. There's not really much I can do about the flat. Um, short of start firing out like a Tuscan Raider. <laughs> Doing a screw. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's, so let's break this down. So, first, of the, first question. Was Han's story about the Empire causing him dumping his cargo even true? This supposes that the whole empire are corrupt, but at this point in the story, the Senate's still a thing, so Palpatine doesn't have the control he would he would later. What uh, do you guys you, think? You actually misread that name, I think, Rob. Sorry. Palpatino. <laughs> Palpatino, sorry. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. Ooh, uh. um, come on now. No, I think... Yeah, what... 
I've probably gone. A, I've probably led with that breakdown okay. there a little bit. Um, what's that story? Yeah. So Carr is asking, um, or he's questioning the, the the theory, saying that Greedo mentions that he dropped the shipment at the first sign of an Imperial cruiser, su- suggesting that if the shipment was destined for the Empire. They, our harm would have got an itchy trigger finger at the sight of an imperial yeah. ship. But True. the next part, the next point was first part of my explanation, which was this supposes that the whole empire are corrupt. So at the time that harm would have jettisoned that cargo that got him into trouble with the hearts, yep. the imperial senate was still in place, which means that yep. most of the empire had to be above board, yes, and that had to be doing things legally. So if you assume that whatever the ship that Han encountered was essentially like a police force. And underneath, it's the bureaucrats that are corrupt. So they would have seized the cargo, not knowing it was destined. If it might have been slaves, they wouldn't have known it was destined for them because yeah. they're just doing their stuff legally. Yeah. It wasn't until midway through A New Hope that the Emperor dissolved yes. the uh, the Imperial Senate and then... Yep. He takes over a complete and absolute rule, doesn't he? So, yes. yeah, I, I've used that as my explanation for supporting our theory. Essentially, you've, you've, yeah, you, you've kind of gone down the same route as I did. Um, my my kind of take on it was going to be even if you factor that out, because actually, I think having having heard you just explain that, that makes even more sense than my theory. Um, my theory was, do we even know that that's true in general? Yeah, you know, because. It strikes me that it's a it's a question of what Han Solo values more, his reputation with a group of people he doesn't particularly like dealing with, mm-hmm. which is to say the huts and the sort of scum and villainy uh, portion of the galaxy, or does he value his his honor more? You know, so if he if he values his ethics and his honor more than that, more than he does his reputation with the huts, then he will say any old model. Yeah. To, uh, yeah. to get to get himself out of the situation, and also we're kind of going to get us. I think we're going to get a sense of where the bravado and stuff comes from. And if he's convinced he's going to be able to make it, make the money up later again, he'll say anything because he'll just say it doesn't matter. I'll you know I'll sort it out later. Yeah. And he's convinced he can get the money back, so he doesn't. It, his reputation doesn't matter because he can fix it. Yes. That's, that was my kind of taking it. But actually, yeah. your idea of the the whole kind of you know. The, the almost like the glacial empire where sort of above the surface it's all above board and then below there's much more kind of That's nefarious really stuff going exactly. on makes much more sense um yep. and actually i think the the idea of chewbacca being part of that group of slaves would even you know would tie nicely into that yeah Maybe they were uh, Twi'leks. Is it Twi'leks? What was the slave dancer? The Ula, Ula yeah, was yeah, it? Twi'leks, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they were Twi'lek slaves because Jabba's been feeding them to the Rancor too much. Yeah. <laughs> well, he was actually importing them, was he? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, see, that's, actually, another, that's another. That's, inter- that's interesting because, Mark, you've read Bloodline. Yeah. That's, that's really interesting because yeah. they, they talk a lot about how uh, the, the world of Ryloth, which is where the Twi'leks come from, were just despised the hut. by the huts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Steve, that's well genius. Be, uh... well, there you yeah. go. Without no having any knowledge of Star Wars, I figured the whole thing out. Well, there you go. <laughs> just as <laughs> a week been off. A lucky man up until this point, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Swoops back in. All the answers. Horace Kant. Ah, oh, yeah. Ah, oh, just missed it. <laughs> Coruscant. So, what do we think um, about the second part of Carl's question? And why didn't the Wookies in Rebels? swear a life debt to the crew of the ghost when they were liberated? My answer's really boring. So, Steve, you got anything? <laughs> That's interesting. Well, then, are you sure? Because <laughs> I sort of said the opposite. <laughs> Mine's, my answer's really boring. No, no, not yours. I was just reading back. Oh, right. right. Sorry, yeah. I didn't, I didn't hear. I'm, I think I broke down for a minute. So, there, so the second part of the question is about Rebels. So why didn't they cover the... Why didn't they touch on the life debt angle in Rebels? What do you think? I have absolutely no idea. I'm still no. pontificating. So yeah. I, I'm not far away from that actually myself, Steve, because I've watched this. I, I saw that episode of Rebels where they saved yeah, like the Wookiees and, yeah, there was no sign of that. It could, I mean, the boring answer, which I suspect yeah. might be yours, Rob, is it was an oversight on the part of the writers. That's part of it, yeah. And they didn't know that there was going to be emphasis placed on the life debt thing later on. 
Maybe. I mean, it's been in the legends for ages. Yeah. But um, I don't know if it's ever been explored in any significant debt in canon. No, Maybe and and Hans Hans thing himself, like the 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 discussion he's having with Greedo about dumping the cargo and that that's nothing. There's nothing in canon about that, is there? Uh, not that I know of. No. no. So that's Certainly probably not now. It is. It, oh, it's, it's undermining our own show here, but. I, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if it's incident. It was at the time very incidental. But oh, it could we, well be, yeah. But they're going to use it now, perhaps, and, they just and, needed and, and a, elaborate. They but... just needed a debt to be paid, didn't they? It doesn't necessarily yeah. at the yeah. time. It didn't have to be like. Yeah, it could have been gambling. It could have been, you know. But cargo made the most sense because it was a gangster. Yeah, no. I mean, it could just be this thing with the the the. Bookies. Rebels is yeah. the word I was looking for, which is written right in front of me, so I don't know why I was struggling with it. Um, <laughs> it could just, I mean, it could be simple. I, I think it's probably an oversight on the part of the writers, or they didn't, th- or they thought, you know, we want to see our heroes be heroes, but we can't have yeah. them carting around a whole pack of Wookiees. That was my other thought on it. It was just, it's just 20 minutes is not enough time to cover work. that, cover it in much depth, in depth. Plus, you'd also have to. If you think about it, take it to its kind of logical and a bit of a grim conclusion, you'd have had to kill off a Wookiee yeah. in, a, in, a, in a Disney XD cartoon. Yeah, which is going to be a bit of a problem. And it could it's going be, to be also different. that these Wookiees are... The ones in Rebels were civilian Wookiees that have been yep. collected up and enslaved. And we already know that Chewbacca was a bit more of a diplomat or he was high-ranking because in Revenge of the Sith, he was up there with the other... What's the other... Wookie's name is it Bonzo the oh, Great or something? He, yeah, um, why not? He was up there Bonzo with Bonzo Dodo Band. That's him. He was up there in the treehouse with Yoda and and Bonzo, yeah. um, doing the whole uh, doing the whole emissary thing. So perhaps he's a little bit more duty bound because he's a serviceman. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, it's all stuff. I mean, there's a book coming out in July called Life Debt, so maybe that'll explore it a little bit more. Yeah, I that think book. that's uh, there's a good chance that's going to do so because um, that's about. Uh, I had a look at the synopsis today because I've been since I read Bloodline, I've been looking to see if I can get more Star Wars books yeah, fix. That are Plus, I got canon. vouchers for my birthday. Yeah, um, proper canon ones. And uh, to be honest, if I see a good price on one that's Legends, I'll still buy it. Yeah, um, if I've read it and it sounds interesting. Yeah, my brain doesn't and, work like uh, that. I can only go in one yeah, direction. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, with the life debt one it's about han solo helping chewbacca to liberate kashyyyk so i don't know how yeah where it's set in the timeline after um, jedi I, I think after jedi i would I wonder so. if it's after bloodline i think it's because, the road um, to force away. yeah it might be I, but my understanding was that bloodline painted kashyyyk as very much a chewbacca having a very kind of charmed life by then you know so maybe it's either just before that point or just after yeah who knows be worth we'll find out i think i'll probably yeah. get that and read it I think I probably um, will too. Carl, I'm sorry we can't give you a more um, finely tuned answer than that on the Rebels yeah, thing. I just, sadly not. I just think that there might be the uh, the practical reason is the writers may not have been focused on that enough and it just didn't suit their long-term needs to have Wookiees as part of that show. And mm. um, yeah, and the other, I suppose the, the closest I can come to an in-canon explanation is that che- Chewbacca's got some sort of service yeah, uh, on a you know he's honour bound because he's a serviceman in some ways, mm-hmm. a diplomat or something on Kashyyyk. So, yeah, perhaps that's the difference. Anyway, thank thank you, Carl, <laughs> for your for your email. And I must yes, just point awesome. out, Carl's an incredible artist. Um, I saw in his email sign off that he sent a link to his Deviant Art page, and it, it's just amazing. on it now actually. It's really bloody good. Yeah, so it's head really over good. to um, CarlRolding dot Deviant dot com. And check out some of his art there. And Car, if you ever want to do really cover art for the podcast, send it my way and I'll use it, mate. Um, yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for writing in this week. There's some really great stuff in there. Yeah, that was brilliant. Yeah. Um, no Connor Corner this week, unfortunately. Boo. Didn't hear from Connor in time Boo. to get it in the show notes. Boo and hiss. He was obviously expecting his invite to join the cast. <laughs> it didn't come through. I'm just checking my email now to make sure that it hasn't come through. After we start yeah. recording, no, it hasn't. Okay. Um, all right, we didn't think we were going to have a Connor, a Connor corner this week. But it's a we trap! <laughs> Connor missed his deadline, but fortunately we were still recording, so we're going to go back, record this, 
and we'll splice it in. You won't even notice, apart from this clumsy little segue. Um, so, Connor's question. Can you see it in the notes? Yep. Yeah, okay, uh, well, it goes no, something like this. No, as usual, I can't see shit. Oh, oh don't sit. worry, mate. No, we can't swear, can we? We're not in After Dark. I'll cut that out, don't <laughs> worry. Do you, right. Mark, do you want a little bleep sound effect? Yeah. Hoo-ah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> right, so this is Connor's question for this week. Uh, well, gents, another week, and that means another question for you to speculate over, in brackets or parentheses, depending on which side of the pond you're on. Which we all love, by the way. So here goes. Now, episode eight is on the horizon with two sons. It's got us thinking about the lightsaber battle, which we are bound to get. So who will it be between? So obviously we know at this point that later in the show, we're going to discuss some of this more in detail. Um, Do we expect there to be a lightsaber battle between Luke and Kylo? But this would be revenge for Han and Jedi don't do revenge. Could it be Luke... Could it be Luke versus Snoke? I don't think Snoke is this giant that we've seen. Remember Pal Pacino in episode five? Oh. Yeah, the big the big floaty head, but yeah. Yep. Um or would it be Ray versus Kylo? Round two, and the two of them are a lot stronger. I still loving the show by the way and look forward to each week uh see it show up in my playlist from your fully clothed listeners, Connor and Leo. <laughs> Superb. <laughs> They're not yeah. supporters of the naked movement there, Steve. Touche. All no, right, so let's now go. I'm after, because we're recording this in After Dark and posting it back in, I've yeah. gone from being 50% clothed to almost completely naked again. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I like the idea my that the clothes looks just looks like dropped, Snoke's head. The clothes, the clothes just dropped off and fell back on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've retconned just, my clothes. Like your, your clothes just pop back on. This is like, oh, we're going to do a bit for Talk Star Wars. <laughs> I just, I just, put, I just oh, put a sock again. on. How did that happen? Um, so, I've, well, got, uh, I've got the answer to his question. Okay. Well, only because you you know the end of the show. No, I know. Nothing to do with that. I'm trying to imagine I haven't listened to that. Right. Okay. Well, don't pretend. I think, no. I We're also think, assuming that turns out to be true as well. Well, exactly. Yeah. And that Everybody's be, reporting on it, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's true. That's it true, could yeah. be a load of wash. The, this is the thing: if you know, just because everybody's reporting it doesn't mean they could all be right, because they might all be using the same source, which turns out to be cobblers. Yeah, so we never that know. That is true. So yeah. let's let's, let's pass this around. Then, do we expect Luke to fight Kylo Ren in Episode yeah. Eight? Yes, you yes. do. Yep, and Ray. Luke's and they in the same kind of scene. Oh, really? Oh, the other, yeah. Two on one. That's interesting. No, not two on one. No, I don't believe oh, that right. would be the case. I believe that one will start and the other will finish, but possibly not with uh, an injury or a beating in the middle. Um, as part of Ray's training, Luke might encourage her to take over or something. Hmm. Oh, I yeah. think. There'll be a fight between Luke and Kylo Ren with Kylo Ren goading Luke. Because, like I say, I'm I'm still kind of clinging to this idea that Luke is kind of going to be tested by Kylo Ren to try and illustrate his, you know, to try and kind of trick him into, not trick him, but to try and force him to kind of betray his brushes with the dark side. Yeah. I still maintain that that's going to, there's going to be something to that in the film. So I reckon there might be a fight which Ray watches between Luke and Kylo, where Kylo's trying to goad Luke into reacting and trying to tap into that Just energy. Just to shake to, her faith in him. To shake her faith and also to demonstrate the dark side's power once it kicks in. Hmm. Because if Luke suddenly starts to come back more more strong, then Ray might be like Kylo might say, you see, this is what the dark side can do if you let it in and stuff like that. Maybe mm, that's an interesting. That's my take. that's my feeling. Um, I also think Snoke Snoke's. I don't I don't see him turning up in episode eight in a, in a in in terms of a fight. I think he's saved, being saved for episode nine. Yeah, I'll be surprised um, if we see him fight. To be honest, he's too rickety to fight. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, he's foobar, isn't he? He's 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 almost he's got an ass on his head, <laughs> which isn't good to start with. That's not a great look. It's not. <laughs> no argument there. You know, he's yeah. he's 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 very past fighting, I think. Mm. I don't, yeah, you might I be don't right expect there. I don't expect Luke to 
to face Snoke. In fact, I, I suspect that perhaps the overall arc of these of this trilogy will be potentially a redemption of Kylo, and it might follow the same template as Maybe. we've already seen in Jedi, and he might be the one to dispatch Snoke. But that's whatever the his motivations thing, are. Yeah, I've got a question. There are two and in, on this in this particular instance, there are two and two. Whereas before, it was just yeah. Luke on his own. With yeah. I mean, obviously, he had support from the Force Ghosts, but it's weird. It's it's a different dynamic this time because we've got two on each side, assuming mm. that Ray stays stays light, and that Luke which makes I think it out of Episode Eight, which is also true. Mm. I've got a question for Connor to ask us for next week. Oh, wait, what? That's very well, meta. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Steve I Corner. Think, yeah, no, it's for Connor. I think Steve, you just let it out. Steve's counter it. corner. <laughs> Go on then, Steve. Will Luke, will Luke die at the end of this trilogy? Right. So you're ask on this episode of Connor Corner, you're asking Connor to ask us next week <laughs> if well, Luke is going to die. Don't feel the boys, Connor. I don't want to. I don't want to ask it. Either, I'm either I'm really it. tired, or that's actually make, starting to make sense. <laughs> I think it's the, the former. I think he can flesh it out as he likes, but the, the, the sort of core, the nugget, the seed of the question is surrounding Luke's possible death at the end okay. of the trilogy. All right, I'll frame it this way. Connor, we'd like to hear your thoughts on the, the above point, And if you can, if depending on how good your answer is, we might give you ours. <laughs> yeah. It's like a bribery thing. Yeah. Uh, something you make it, you know, you scratch our back and we'll, uh, Theorise on yours. <laughs> I don't, oh goodness <laughs> me! Right, the final point: Ray versus Kylo. I think we all expect that to be a Absolutely. thing, right? Okay, 100%. so that's the that's a definite. Luke versus Kylo. You guys think that'll happen? I'm not so sure, yeah. and none of us think Luke will verse will go up against Snoke in a lightsaber duel. No, I don't think you. Not in a lightsaber duel. Even if he turn, <laughs> if he does turn up physically, it won't be. He won't be lightsabering. He'll be more like Yoda was. Whereas right. more sort of about the power of the force rather than the skill with the lightsaber and until the prequels obviously shot that out of the water. Yeah. I'll give Anthony that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, what another question for Connor. <laughs> Last Go one. On. Last it one. Will, and then we're gonna move on. Is Ray gonna, is is Kylo gonna lop off one of her limbs? Oh, that's a good question. Mm. You know the sad thing about it is I think and I'm the reason I say is I, I think I have the answer and I think I know why and I think the sad reason there's a the reasoning behind it is sad. I think he won't. But I don't think it's going to be because of the story. I think it's because they're worried they're going to get backlash from fans mm. because they put both put because uh, there's there's this there's this minority that's very vocal that will just not accept anything bad in a story happening to a female. Oh no, we got this is Star Wars. Everyone gets their limbs lopped off. Yeah, but we've never had a female in that part before. Well, good. We need to lop her limbs off. Equal opportunity, <laughs> dismemberment. I, yeah, I, exactly. I, agree it's, I agree it's equality. I'm just saying there are some people who, who will object to that. I don't care. Screw them. I, I want to see an arm come off. Mm, I won't be okay. happy. And I can see Kylo. You can tell we've been on After Dark Side, can't you? I'm trying yeah. to hold back in here. Yeah. I, I can see, I can hear Kylo saying, I told you that's mine, and then lopping her arm off or hand and catching the lightsaber. Yeah. Ooh. There's a little After Dark Side taste for you. Do you think you'll take the arm as well? <laughs> what do you mean? Like, to, as a keepsake? <laughs> oh, wow. What or at all. <laughs> Mark, that's too after Dark Side okay, right. into general. Right, I apologise. I apologise. You're talking about an implement, right. aren't you? I'm gonna, I'm gonna I absolutely refuse to that take that out. I'm going to blow this out. I'm going to blow this out of the water and make you feel really bad. If they cool. turn out to, if she turns out to be a Skywalker, you've just made that weird. <laughs> He's going to put it next to the helmet. <laughs> Right. He's going to put right. it next to the that's helmet. Enough. And when I say that, I mean Darth Vader's helmet, not of his. Course. <laughs> of course, that's what you mean. Who would think you that's didn't? What I mean. I'm so desperate to keep the explicit tag oh. off of this podcast, so oh. I'm going to draw a line under this right now. No, um, helmet's Connor, fine if you're talking about Darth Vader's like. hat. 
Connor and Leo, thank you very much for your question. Even thank though you, it was late, we have circled back. We have circled back and made the effort to get that into this week's episode for you guys. And it is ten to twelve. You guys are hanging. It. You guys are hanging off the underscore of uh, the underside of Cloud City, and we're the Millennium Falcon. We've come back for you. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, because we heard your cries. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, work on that. <laughs> okay. Now um, we'll go back to past us, who are a little bit more lucid than than current us. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. We right. should definitely do that, though, if we at some point try and get some listens on. Yeah. You know, that'd be cool. That probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Fantastic, could, that would be. You know, the, 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 they, listeners do have the option of sending MP3s to Talk Star Wars for us to include as proper, as proper read out questions. Absolutely. And kind of, you know, yeah. narrating their own questions to us. So feel yeah. free. If you fancy hearing your own voice on the podcast, send it in. Works for me. Indeed. Right. We've got some exciting. Uh, new stories to get through. I've just scrolled yes. down, so I've lost my place. And there we go, back smoothly where we were. Um, top of the list, Star Wars Celebration. So it's been confirmed that both Carrie Fisher and Mark Hamill will be at Celebration in July. That's awesome. So I know where I'm going to be queuing up for hours on end. To go and get oh, a cuddle. Yeah. Yeah. Get some intros for the show. Yeah. Carrie Fisher, yeah. Carrie Fisher will be up for it. She's fantastic. Yeah. I, I'm, so, be, so will Mark Hamill. Yeah, I reckon so. I'm, I'm definitely going to try and... I've got. Just, I have to meet them. Yeah, just don't ask for any voice acting stuff from him for intros because I'll just it will just emasculate me. <laughs> it will destroy you because he's just so good. I'll you erase know. all of your uh, After Dark Side <laughs> intros and replace them with the Joker. <laughs> Fine. That's Actually, you know what? Though. I'm all right with that. I mean, assuming that uh, this is kind of um, concrete, that they are going to be in UK probably at the time. So it makes me think that their parts are considerably lengthy that the mm-hmm. fact that they're, they're probably in london anyway or pinewood studios Maybe, yeah. yeah well, well you know? remember mark was here last summer or the summer before yes. and he was only in the force awakens for what, well yes but minute. wasn't he doing a lot of reading and stuff um, <laughs> he was doing a lot of sitting in his in his trailer looking be- like bemused and slightly annoyed <laughs> growing a beard a contractually yes, obligated him. beard Right, yeah, exactly. But it'd be good that they're there. Oh my god, I would love to. I would literally pee my pants. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to take one of those little plastic bags that you strap to your leg. Yeah, I've got some adult diapers here from a hangover. Not from me. They're a hangover from that, someone else. That belongs Listen. in its own section. TSW TMI, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'll bring them along. There, we would never need to use the loo. We can just literally stand there and go. <laughs> <laughs> Shuddering. That All was right. me weird, by the way, if you didn't know what that sound effect was. Oh, people could have drawn a dot between those. <laughs> uh... Anyway, Force well, Awakens sound effect, news. Sound effect you might have heard in my background is my girlfriend coming home. <laughs> I didn't pick up on it, mate. No, that's fine. Um, so, as we heard from Rob at the top of the show, I completed Star Wars Bloodline, um, which was fantastic. And I reached out to Claudia Gray on Twitter on Saturday morning mm. and asked her if um, the character Ransom... Uh, Castafo had been based on Tom Hiddleston because that's all I was getting. I think I mentioned last week, Rob, that that's yeah. who I was seeing and hearing when that character was was in the book. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I said Benicio del Toro at the time, but actually reading through the book further than I got at the time, I said that. And also, obviously, um, without going into spoilers, um, yeah, that's not happening. Yeah, yeah. Um, it turns out oh, yeah. I may have been onto something with my Tom Hiddleston thing because. Okay. Uh, Claudia Gray responded to my tweet and said, um, we are of one mind. Honestly, oh. the physical description is pretty on the nose. I'm not sure I got it from the physical description, though. I think no, I got I, it from the voice she she gave him. Yeah. It's really well really, written. Uh, it is really well written, yeah. Really well written it's... character. And... Um... For those of us not sure who Claudia Gray is... Yeah, the author of... Um, she wrote... She is the author. She's the author of Lost Stars, which was her first Star yeah. Wars offering, mm-hmm. and um, this most recent book, Bloodline, which oh, is yeah. incredible. A really good... And this, it really is good. Bloodline, and this, Steve. This is canon, right? This yeah. is this is seriously canon, okay. yeah. Locked Very down canon. tight. Um, yeah. So, slight spoilers for Bloodline, if you haven't already read it... Um, Steve, this outlines for us that Kylo Ren didn't go to the dark side until about six years before The Force Awakens. 
during mm. during the events of this book, Ben Solo is still training with Luke. Yeah. And Ray mm. is on Jakku. They don't mention Ray in the book in any way, shape or form. But by then we know she already is. Pablo Hidalgo yeah. said she's <laughs> she's been on Jakku for about five years at that point. So this is like having a prequel to episode seven, isn't yeah, it? A yeah, a really a really good one wow. as well. Yeah, I might, very, um, very good. Did you get a digital copy of that, Mark? I, I got did, it. Yeah. yeah, I got it in um, I, I Kindle. Was. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I might actually download that. That sounds like a. a it's really good. good. Yeah, can't Highly recommend, recommend it enough. Very, very yeah. good stuff. So I'll buy that. You can buy awesome. it on talkstarwars.co.uk forward slash books. Um, well, I'll do it from there. Well, I think you should. What a nice segue. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we've got some really exciting, mouth-watering, in fact, Rogue One, a Star Wars story news this week. Uh, making Star Wars.net revealed the name of some characters, hmm? including Director Krennic. So he's a, di- yeah. he's a director, that Ben Mendelsohn character. So the guy in the white yes. uniform, Steve. Yeah, walking across the water. Yeah, the one we said looked a little bit like um, the Grand, the Grand Admiral. Yeah. yeah, the Grand the Grand Admiral, Admiral's uniform looked yeah. a little bit like Ian McKellen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he is director Krennic. So director of what? I wonder. The Secret yeah. Service. Is it the ISB? The ISB. Yeah, mm-hmm. could be director of the ISB. Yeah, could um, be. So we also hear that uh, Diego Luna's character is called Captain Cassian Andor. Mm-hmm. Which is, we thought it was Cassian Willix about a month or yeah. so ago. So that that came from making Star Wars as well. I think that the name Willix. So that was uh, mistaken. But Captain Cassian Andor is our presumably our male yeah. lead. Yep. Uh, then we've got K two fifty, yep, which is the Enforcer droid played by Alan Tudyk. That's interesting. That it's an Enforcer droid because we were kind of speculating that it might be something a bit spindly and yeah well, it know, definitely almost, like is a, almost like a protocol droid but um it's actually sounds like it's more of a muscle yeah like a like an hk in the old uh knights of the old republic yeah it's very series. very slender did you see the images yes the, the, the images tall, of it, it looked tall but that may have been yeah. an expected thing i mm. think it is i think it is tall because you see it briefly behind um gin in the trailer Yes, and it it's kind of towering above her, but then she she's quite mm-hmm. petite, so maybe not. Um, yeah, I really like the design of it as well because it looks, even though it's called an enforcer droid, it actually looks quite friendly, which is yeah bizarre. Uh, then we've got the character played by Jiang Wen is called Baze. Okay, and we've got uh, Bodhi Rook played by Riz Ahmed, good British boy. Yeah. I like that guy. Did you ever see um, Dead Set? It's a zombie show no. set on the. Another one you mean the framework of Big it. Brother? It's amazing. It's really good. He's in that. He's great in it. Mm. Uh, then we get Sharut, played oh. by Donnie Yen. So I guess my hope that he might be playing Kanan is out the window. Well, you never. I mean, he might. He might be incognito under an alias. Yeah, it could be. Still not dead. Still not dead in the water. But this does kind of go more towards diffusing it. Yeah. Um, then we get a character called Biston, who's an alien creature. And there's another one that, that I hadn't put in here. It's Pao, I think. Okay. P-A-O. Um, that's also an alien creature, and they look great. They look really... Mm. I mean, they're definitely Star Wars, but they're not something I've seen before. One of them looks like a fat cat. It's amazing. Okay, mm. nice. There is also... All these images come from a book, which is the visual guide to Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Okay. And it features quite prominently Darth Vader. So he's definitely in this film. Mm. And it's also the Darth Vader with the low widow's peak peak brow that comes down over the top of the eyes. It was slightly different. I think I'm probably going to do a piece on the site where I look at the different designs of the Darth Vader masks to try and work out what the visual cues are for those things. Because they look quite different. Um and yeah, I've made a note that there's also two CGI characters which we've just discussed in the Rogues yep. group, which they look amazing. Um, so we also got some word on ships confirmed for Rogue One as well. So there's a new Imperial ship called a Tie Striker. Tie yep. Striker. It's got the wings up on the top almost. Uh, looks like a bird of prey. It's amazing. Uh, then there's a U wing for the Rebels, which looks like the letter U. It's awesome looking. That's really cool. Looks like a some sort of weapon out of Star Trek actually. Mm. And then the Atat, we, you know, we said those Atats looked a little bit different. 
Yeah. But they're actually called AT ACTs. Okay, I'm going to act. I'm going to throw a um a prediction out which is that they are, that stands for all terrain assault combat transport. Okay. That's my that's my theory. That's a good call. Mm, I, so. well, I reckon the um the new tie fighter the tie striker those little wings I was just googling that now. Yeah. Or any other search engines are available. <laughs> um I reckon those wings are for in atmosphere. Yeah, could Maybe. be. Could like be. skimming, you know. Yeah. yeah, if it's a strike force. Talk, this is the one with a double cockpit, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, double cockpit, double wings, and double. Oh wings no, on. Hang, hang on. Because I've seen two different pictures online. Oh right, okay. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm I've not. I've seen one with like here. a double cockpit with with the wings. If only there was a reliable online resource for you to go to. Try talkstarwars.co.uk. <laughs> one of the last <laughs> posts I put up were all the all the images and the tie strikers in there, Steve. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's a carousel. You'll be able to scroll through the. Images. I have to act ignorant because then you have to explain it and it, it advertises the site a bit more. It's I all know. intentional. That excuse has been doing you wonders <laughs> for years. Um, <laughs> but I do reckon it's in atmosphere because why else would you need it? <laughs> so, in space, you could drive around in a cube. Ask the Borg. <laughs> not a Nissan cube, though. Not even a Borg would drive <laughs> one of those. Um, also, on making Star Wars.net on their podcast, um, they said they suggested that the rogues our group of heroes in Rogue One Star Story will know. They'll be presented with a um, with a choice. They'll know Darth Vader is in that back to tank trying to heal himself, so they'll, they'll know he's vulnerable. And it's a choice to either, as I've written in here, an opportunity to rid the galaxy of this evil turd. I don't know how tired I was when I wrote these notes, but they will have a choice to go and take out Vader or complete their mission. And that's okay. going to be a point. That's going to be the situation, the Sophie's choice that they're going to have. Yeah, in this movie. And I think that sounds really cool. That could be cool if they do it yeah, right. Done it. Yeah. Did you find the picture of the tie striker, Steve? I'm just looking now. I'll chuck a link in the in the thing in a bit. I'm I, I'm finding it hard to navigate to, but I, I think it's because I'm in the wrong bit. Okay, mate. All I'll right. Roll back. Well, let's leap over to some episode eight news then. Um, Ryan Johnson, Mark Hamill, Daisy Ridley and Adam Driver all rocked up in Northern Ireland this week this week for filming yep. at a place called Malinhead, I believe. Yeah, that sounds right. That's where they built the Falcon on the edge of that bluff, right? Yes. Um, so they all turned up there. Now, do we think they're all going to physically... I know we discussed a bit of this last week, Rob. Mm. Are they all going to be physically in the same place? As in, are we going to see Kylo Ren there talking to them or is this going to be a vision of some type i was thinking maybe he just misses them so maybe he's kind of pursuing them okay not just like following the trail not missing them as in oh, it's been such a long time since i've seen you yeah not <laughs> in that a cuddle no no um more, more in the sense of you know they they kind of make out they kind of make the jump to light speed and he sort of turns up uh, and he's kind of following their scent almost you know a lot like that, that sort idea. of thing it could work. It could work. I could also see them kind of actually interacting briefly. We talked a bit about how Kylo Ren might be trying to kind of cast doubts in Ray's mind about Luke's yeah, ability to to kind of train her effectively without turning her to the dark side. Yeah. Whereas obviously with him, she knows what she's getting. That sort of you know that kind of better the devil you know thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wonder if that might be a factor. So you may well see kind of some dialogue that that kind of seeds that. Mm-hmm. In which case, obviously, it makes sense. There's also there's a pretty interesting story coming up in a couple of minutes about the Knights of Ren that might actually answer my question here about whether or not Kylo's going to be there physically or not. But we'll get to that in a second. Um, okay. This will make you happy, Steve. Uh, take that star. Gary Barlow is joining Star Wars um, to play a stormtrooper alongside Tom Hardy. Really? Gets, oh my god! This gets weirder and weirder. <laughs> mm, everyone I, wants I, to be I in it. it. I love it. Them. I love that. I love that all they're, they're all trying to do that. You know, all the stars are like, "I want to be in it. I want to be yeah. in it." I was watching a, an old interview with Benedict Cumberbatch, yeah, um, on Graham Norton. He was talking about he was both answering loads of quickfire questions, and he said, "Are you in the new Star Trek?" And he said, "No comment." Yeah. Uh, are you in the new Star Wars? No comment. And they said, "Oh, but I've heard a rumor that you went to set." And he said, "Oh, I did. It was brilliant. I got to, you know, meet the people behind the movie and see some of the sets and stuff." 
Uh, and he said, weren't you tempted to kind of just pop a helmet on and play a storm to- stormtrooper? And he said, no comment. But at the time, people were thinking, oh, maybe he's in there as a stormtrooper. But, uh, you know, everybody wants to do it. Yeah, yeah. I can understand why. I'd love to do it. But I'm too tall, I think. Be mistaken for a Wookiee dressing up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got a... Um... Great magician, Mark, on that, on there, on the, um, on the website. Look good, um, don't they? I- yeah, I mean, that TIE fighter, the only real thing is that they've moved the wings at a different angle, so it's got to be in the atmosphere. There's no other reason to have it like that. I wonder if the wings move through two different positions. Mm, like the S4s in attack position. Yeah, that could Maybe. be cool. Yeah. That, yeah. Seems like better te- that seems like better tech than what they have in New Hope, though. Yeah. Well, we've, but, got, we've had this problem see, before, haven't we, with all yeah. the... Yeah, the and I was thinking... Of- I was thinking about it today, I was trying to explain it away, but I just think, if you think about how little time we spend in the Star Wars universe between these movies, we're not really with them for very long. So we're probably just seeing a snapshot of everything that's out there. You know, I know Kyle yeah. at Tumbling Saber had an issue with the amount of different stormtroopers there are. Yeah. But we just haven't seen enough of the Star Wars universe. It just makes it feel bigger and bigger. The more they add in mm-hmm. there, the more variety they drop in. Yeah. I think the evolution of technology has stopped in the Star Wars universe. You get to a certain point where you can do everything. So what you do mm-hmm. is you rehash everything and you have fads where things are coming out. There's no real evolution of ships. All the ships are there. I totally agree with you, Mark. They're, and we're just getting we're seeing bits and bobs. Because when yeah. you look at the prequels, the ships were far more advanced when you looked at them. Like, um, uh, what's the name? Oh, the, uh, the, the, that Carillion. Was that a Carillion ship? I can't remember now. What Padme's the, the bright craft. Padme's ship. Yeah, from Naboo. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you look at that, it was far more advanced than, than any other ship, wasn't it? Yeah. It was seen in the, in the, in the Star Wars universe. And yeah, I know. That's for, 60 years before. I know for George, that was him looking back to sort of the 50s when you had the big fins and the chrome and mm. and all that sort of stuff, like the Chevys that like you used to drive around and, as a kid. Mm. And then in... Um, by the time we catch up with Luke in A New Hope, you're sort of looking at the cars of the 70s, which are all these dirty little rotten things rusting to pieces because they were built to be disposable, run into the ground, and all the prestige stuff died decades before. That's kind of That was his thought process, I think. All that Art Deco world would have rotted in the shadow of the, of the, uh, yeah. the Empire and the Sith Royal, you know? Because there is, there is no sort of analogue and di- digital divide in Star Wars, you know, in a timeline, is there? Sometimes you can see a nice digital display, and other times it's a red button. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> there seems to be any more reason to it. And I think, I think that's right. I think there is no evolution of technology. It's just you cherry-pick it out of the films as you need it. Well, yeah. one of the things I've noticed in, the, in Bloodline is they're talking about how the different worlds have all got different requirements and different... Um, abilities and stuff and they they kind of uh, the, the example they use is that there's a group of people who think that every tiny backwater moon should be equipped to take on a superstar destroyer yeah so some worlds are going to be more affluent than others so they're going to have better tech anyway so i think that's pretty normal you know that's that's not unheard of in in life you know people with more money tend to have access to cooler tech yeah so i think maybe worlds with more wealth might have access to better tech in the Star Wars universe, even. Yeah, it is sort of an allegory of like the yeah. first world and the third world here today. Kind isn't of, it? yeah. I didn't want to take it down such a dark route, but yeah, fair enough. Uh, spoiler warning for episode eight: if you're if you're anxious about being spoiled on any of these rumors, uh, you might want to jump forward to the next section. Looks like the Knights of Ren are set to return, not retune, as I've written in the show notes, um, for episode eight, according to <laughs> MSW. Um, is it a band? It is. It's going re- to. It's, it's Kyle and Corey's uh, and James's um, super group that they were talking about. Oh on their yeah, show yeah. This week. The Knights of Ren. Yeah, Max, the Knights Re- of Max Ren. Rebo and the Knights of Ren. <laughs> um, so here's a couple. Of, let me just run through these points, these bullet points that they put on MSW, so that we can just. Uh, see what we think about the things that are reported to be popping up. So we will see Luke's green lightsaber make a return. Mm-hmm. Luke Skywalker and Rey are on Arc 2, just before nightfall as the sun sets in the background and it starts to rain. Um, 
this is all a description from the set. Somebody was on set looking at this scene being shot, apparently. So, uh, Ray's hair is supposedly pulled back. She doesn't have the vest on from episode seven. Uh, okay. Luke and Ray are wearing the costumes that we've spoken about before. So, Luke's black tunic and the yep. cape that covers half of his chest and the black glove back on his hand. Yep. Um, so, at this point, Kylo Ren and the Knights of Ren turn up along the coast. Uh, Kylo Ren continues advancing towards the heroes with the Knights of Ren, uh, but Kylo is not wearing the mask at this point. Okay. Kylo has the same cross guard lightsaber as he had in Episode Seven, which is cool with the ragged blade. I would imagine uh, his costume looks the same as in Episode Seven. Also, uh, Ray and Kylo Ren duel one on one and end up fighting alongside the cliff face overlooking nighttime waters. Kylo wants revenge after Rey disgraced him in Episode 7. Uh, the Knights of Ren go for... This is where it really starts to get exciting for me. The Knights of Ren go for Luke Skywalker while Rey is left with Kylo. Um, Luke engages the Knights of Ren on the beach while Kylo attempts to kill Rey. The first Black Knight has an axe and moves towards Luke but the f- is force pushed away to his death after being thrown through the air so Luke's well, I mean, not this, taking this prisoners from this. To, yeah this went from 0 to 60 fast, yeah. <laughs> after Luke dispatches the first knight he ignites the green lightsaber How cool does, and this is in rain um, Luke moves He's done it with through a, yeah whatever mate <laughs> Yeah, Luke moves through each knight one by one Ray and Kylo's battle moves, moves to the side of the cliff because of course um, suddenly Ray is nowhere to be seen. She's taken out of the battle. She's either wounded or appears to go over the side of the cliff. Um, Luke casually walks towards Kylo to finish him off, but Kylo retreats when he sees Skywalker has defeated the rest of the Knights of Ren. Uh, so Luke Skywalker is a badass Jedi and he will destroy your squad. <laughs> I love that. What a cool description of that little scene, eh? That sounds so pretty the cool. Where did this person get all this information? I mean, they were they on set. Bre- yeah, but they've just breached everything they're on set for. Yeah, but I think I mean, it sounds really awesome. Your, why would you risk it? Yeah, I know. I mean, it's they it's must feel they must feel confident that they're not going to have it traced back to them, or they wouldn't go to MSW. And MSW, they're they're cool guys. They wouldn't use it if they felt they were going to get the source in trouble. Um, no. And I'll I'll make sure I put a spoiler warning at the top yeah, of that so that we people because I'm not I'm not it. sort of happy about I mean I, I I find it really interesting I'm loving it yeah. all but why do people do that It's because these are real pivotal scenes Yeah yeah and fortunately you for you Steve by lunchtime tomorrow I would have forgotten it. all of it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah that's so how you I'm work. Plus it's I can one watch thing. episode seven over and over, and I'm like, that is amazing. People have got to watch this. <laughs> plus, it, plus one, up? it's one thing. It's one thing to see it written down. It's quite something else to see how they shoot it. Yeah, if exactly. it, if, if if this all holds water, which we don't necessarily know it does, there might be misdirection in here. There might it might be the overarching theme might be correct, but it might have subtle details that have been revised or exaggerated or even just completely invented. Uh, you yeah. know, I remember I've seeing. Done, um, I've already gone. done the Chandler double finger click, and it's gone. It's gone. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I remember seeing I wonder... a, a Reddit. I'm uh, sorry, Mark. Just go. No, um, I remember seeing a Reddit post. Uh, this was after Force Awakens came out, uh, and basically somebody had sort of highlighted it of, as to how much the person had got completely wrong, even though they were saying, "Oh, you know, I've had a le- I've leaked a copy of the script and all this stuff," and he would go through the list, and it was all just completely off off the mark some of it was re- ludicrously over the top yeah you know yeah, i remember it i'll see if i can dig it up actually if i can still find it it was hilarious to read after the fact at the time you might have been thinking well i don't want to know all this but then you go and see the films like, oh it's all rubbish i see yeah <laughs> i'll um, see if i can dig it up because it, it, it's pretty entertaining i wonder how long this scene's going to take as well because i think that could just be a couple of minutes on screen well, it could easily it's not going to be a it's not going to be, yeah, it could be, but it, it, it feels to me like a it's going to be a... thing for, it sounds like revenge for Han. Almost. Mm, like I don't know, I get the impression the Knights of Ren are coming for them and not the other way around. Oh, okay. oh that's the impression I get for sure. Yeah. Um, the, this could be one of those things like uh, Mustafar, where it's edited in with other stuff. Yeah, stuff going on elsewhere, yeah. 
Yeah, I, 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 Mustafa is a bad example actually because I think that's largely focused on those two. Yeah. Um, the the death the second Death Star battle in the three sort of yeah, the different three stories going battles. on in Jedi. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, it actually, could be. Uh, on the on the related subject, it's a slight tangent. I read um, an article the other day about Star, the new Star Wars Risk, and how it's basically nothing like Risk, but it's awesome. It's right. three three. It's basically just playing out the three different battles from Return of the Jedi on three separate boards. Oh, bloody hell! And apparently, it's amazing. Time. Really? It's sort of you kind of go through a certain you go through a certain amount of the first bit, and then you move on to the second bit, and so on but um you play through the whole game and the idea is that one team has to stop the other one from getting to the to those points and uh, it just sounds fantastic mm. yeah, it does yeah and with the three points meaning um the the generator the center of the death star and what luke in the tower uh, yeah. so it's luke yeah it's the i think it's the shield generator the battle of endor luke and luke and vader something like that yeah yeah okay luke cool. and palpacino Palpa. <laughs> Palpatine. Yeah, I almost, <laughs> uh, you almost made me do that. <laughs> you almost got me in there. But, uh, no, they'll have to wait for the uh, the first After Dark Side to include it. Yeah. <laughs> right, we've got um, my my new Snoke theory, right? Okay. I, put, it, I, it, was, I was reading something the other day, and I included the link to it in the email I sent to you guys earlier on today, um, but it wasn't required reading. Um, okay. I was reading this article the other day about uh, whether or not anybody knew about Ray's origins when they made Episode Seven, okay, and they were loading up with um, bits and pieces of information. Like, if you listen to the music, you can yep. hear a lot of Darth Vader's theme in Ray's theme, and I okay. also heard on um, Star Wars Oxygen the music of John Williams, which comes out from Rebel Force Radio. Oh yes, um, I know that one. David W. Collins broke down Ray's theme and said it's essentially Kylo Ren's theme in reverse of vice versa. Ah, interesting. So they're, they're definitely tying those two characters together musically, thematically, and narratively because they're yeah. on a similar trajectory, those two we know characters. They have, we know they have form for this. Yes. Because obviously we, we know the uh, the episode one parade scene is the, the celebration scene is the Imperial theme in a different key. Exactly. Same notes. Yeah. And uh, also, there was one of the reasons that the Snoke is Plagueis theory was do- having so much traction was because the Snoke theme is throat singing. Yes, the and opera. in episode three, the opera is throat singing, the one where uh, Palpatine's talking about Darth Plagueis. Exactly. So that was one of the reasons that people thought that it was get- that, that theory gained traction was because w- they've done it before. They've tied things together yeah. using music in the past. Yeah. And it, being Star Wars, it could either be a really finely focused... Um, point to connect two characters or it could just be a giant broad stroke to say these are the characters that exist on this side of the line it doesn't mean that they're related in any way shape or form but these are the villains boo and hiss at them and these are the heroes cheer and clap and then yeah exactly yeah ray being kylo ren's theme in reverse could easily just be you know kylo ren is this is one side of the coin and ray is the opposing force that could Mm -hmm. literally be that simple exactly and it also said in this article that um there could be a connection between Ray and Snoke. Okay. In fact, it goes a little bit further than that and says that the two may be related. Wow, and interesting. I, th- interesting. I think that's a bit of a stretch, but it did get me thinking. So I think this was, it was Saturday or Sunday, so I, I got quite excited because I was reading this article and I sent out a tweet saying, I've just hatched a new Snoke theory. And uh, this morning I woke up to a message from a listener named Jonathan Morales. So hello, Jonathan. Um, he sent me a message saying, where's your Snoke theory? Hashtag can't wait. So, nice. That's awesome. Said, it'll, it'll go out on the on the show tonight. What is the connection? What if the connection between Ray and Snoke is that Snoke is a chosen one? A child of the Force from long before Anakin Skywalker. There goes my thought rapidly through, <laughs> through my head. <laughs> Sorry, I need Jonathan getting the hell out of Dodge. If, if yeah. I knew that um, it would do it b- uh, before it happened, I could mute my mic. But unfortunately, yeah, I get very no, little sorry. warning because it's a blind corner, so they just go hurtling that's up okay. there. I can take yeah. it out. I can take anything out of your channel as and it not affect, it not oh, affect okay. the overall yeah, edit at all. Um, so, do we think 
Snoke could be a child of the Force before Anakin, and I've made some notes saying that maybe it's a generational event, and uh, it could be that Snoke was a child of the Force who was seduced by the dark side, and maybe even, and th- these two things could be exclusive to each other, so if it isn't a child of the Force, it, this second part could be true. Maybe he is Plagueis's master. Ooh. He was a Sith Lord, and he was master to Darth Plagueis, and Plagueis learned everything from Snoke that he needed to create life and pro- prolong life and to save the people he cared about, remember? And before mm. he attempted to kill Snoke, his master, and assume the position of Sith Lord himself, okay. um, and that's the damage that we're seeing to Snoke in The Force Awakens. We're seeing the, the Snoke done to him by Plagueis. And then yeah. Palpatine rolls in as Plagueis's apprentice, and that cycle repeats itself because that's the mm, way okay. the Sith live, <clears throat> isn't it? Mm. Um so that's kind of my theory, and I've got I've broken it down here to make it easily digestible. So, is Snoke Plagueis's old Sith master? Did he survive the attempt on his life and use the dark side to prolong his life so that he could return once the Sith had fallen? So all the while Palpatine was it was ruling, Snoke's off somewhere watching from the sidelines, convalescing. This is something that we've hit on before. Yes. Um, and now he's gotten to the point where the Sith have fallen and he's been able to consolidate his power. Mm-hmm. We've seen somebody behind the scenes in Claudia Gray's bloodline, and we, Rob, sort of put in the strings and the the Amaxine warriors, that militia that grows up out of nowhere, mm-hmm. that was all put into play by somebody of great power. The lady, yes. I forget the character's name, who's obsessed with becoming a royal that lady that oh, dropped man, Leia I literally into, just read it this morning. Yeah, I can't remember her name, but yeah. she's clearly being motivated by somebody. I think that that's yes. all Snoke, and I think it's taken him this long to get to a position where he's got that much influence. Okay. Um, well, so because this, he was so badly injured. Yeah, because he was so badly injured, and, he's, and because he's so powerful. Remember, Plagueis learned. If there's any truth to my theory, and Snoke was Plagueis's old... Sith Master, Plagueis would have learned everything he knows from Snoke, but not necessarily yeah. everything Snoke knows. Yeah. So if Snoke knew how to use the Force to repair himself, which takes us back to um, Anthony's question from earlier on, which was, mm-hmm. will Rogue One set up things for Episode Eight? This could be what we're seeing. We're seeing this at play. We're seeing a Sith Lord using the Force and the back to tank yeah. to repair himself. And then later on in 8, we might learn that that's what Snoke did in order to survive. So after Plagueis attempted to kill him, he yeah. used his mastery of the dark side to keep himself alive and rebuild himself. We've seen in yeah. a special feature somewhere that underneath those robes, Snoke's bendy like, like spaghetti, isn't he? He's a mess. His body's all contorted and twisted. And that mm. could be that that's the dark side consuming him. And it could also be that he is in a real mess because someone's tried to kill him. Mm. Yeah, interesting series, though. So could this show a trend that the Sith are getting weaker in the Force generationally because they're so quick to off the person? They they think they've got everything that they can take from the person yeah, above them. Yeah. That it's, they're de-evolving. It's always, they're devolving, exactly. Their, their knowledge, their presence is diminishing because... They're so quick to jettison the person above them who's got more knowledge and more power. Um, Now, if Snoke is a chosen one, does this show Snoke's fulfilling his destiny as a chosen one by bringing balance back to the Force? Now, remember, balance is still a very fluid concept in Star Wars. Um, Could it be that the Sith needed to rise because there's 10,000 dogmatic Jedi over that side of the Force and nobody over this side? to balance things out and then the Sith are obliterated and something needs to happen to balance that out after um, Palpatine's rise after his ascension and the death of all the Jedi Mm. so balance is a very tenuous thing within Star Wars is Snoke if Snoke's a child of the force is is this his fulfilling of his destiny by bringing the dark side back Mm. and trying to get rid of Rey uh, trying to get rid of Luke um, so does Snoke value Ray 
because she is also a child of the Force. And his design now is to have two children of the Force ruling the galaxy as Master and Apprentice. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that would explain why he needs Luke out of the picture. Yep. Because Luke's, Mm. like Steve said previously, Luke's had his trial. He's incorruptible now. Yeah. So the best Snoke can do is get Luke out of the way and Mm. and pit Kylo Ren against Rey and take the winner for himself. What what did you mean earlier on about the Chosen One? You think Snoke might be another Chosen One of a previous generation? Yeah, well, I, I wonder, we've... We're accepting now that Anakin's a chosen one. We're told, in no uncertain terms in the movie, aren't we, that yeah. he's he's this virgin in the Force. We believe he was a virgin birth. It's implied by uh, Palpatine that he was created by Plagueis. It's kind of like winks at the camera, doesn't he? Plagueis knew how mm. to cre- manipulate the midichlorians to create life. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. nudge. Yeah. He didn't mm. have a dad. So... Um, my my theory is that the Force generates a child of the Force, somebody born the way Anakin was born, generationally to restore balance. So if you've got 10,000 Jedi and nobody using the, the dark side of the Force, suddenly someone will pop up to fill that need. And I think that might have been Snoke, like a generation or so before Luke. Right. Um, excuse mm-hmm. me, before Anakin. So Snoke would have been created by the by the force and then he would have gone on to become a dark side user but also an acolyte you know he's extremely studied and taught Plagueis everything he needs and then Plagueis learnt all these things about creating life and he goes on to create Anakin and kill mm. Snoke straight away because he wants to assume the position so Very what do you interesting. reckon? No, yeah, I, think I, could, brilliant. I could see that um, I, 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 interesting I, to, uh, to kind of, that would be another one that Luke could very easily kind of bring out in the exposition you know, the, the prophecies tell of a chosen one who, you know, who would bring balance to the force. What they didn't say was that there was more than, you know, that there was more than one. Yeah. That it wasn't just a single event. It was, uh, it would repeat or something like that. You just kind of yeah. learn a bit more about it. Well, my I'd Ray theory. If some of that isn't real. Yeah. I, I'm just trying to think outside of what we've already seen. I'm basing it on. <clears throat> very few solid facts right now. We, we know that Snoke's his own thing. Pablo's told us that. We know that he isn't Plagueis because Pablo's yeah. told us that. So we're looking at Snoke being a brand new character who mm-hmm. needs to be, his origins need to be explained within a movie. So yeah. how are you going to, are you going to sit there and Luke's going to go, well, years and years ago there was a student who was Snoke and he's, wrote, he's risen up. The, it's very easy to tie in Ray's origin with Anakin's origin and Snoke's origin. And I can imagine Luke talking to Ray and saying, you're the yeah. chosen one that I've been looking for because, and you were hidden on Jakku so that you could live out your life free of, um, free of the connections that would make it difficult to train you. You know, like the attachments that Anakin had developed in his life yeah. made him a weaker Jedi. Okay. Um, but my my Ray theory suggests that she was left on Jakku to rob her of attachments so that when she right. was finally ready to be trained, she wouldn't have that issue that Anakin had. And she was being watched over by the Church of the Force. So I imagine mm-hmm. Luke explaining to Ray about her heritage, and that's when we're going to learn about Ray being a child of the Force, born of right. the Force. Um, and then I think he'll tell her, you're not the only one. Because Anakin was a child of the Force, and this guy Snoke, this big bad that we've been seeing, yeah. he's a child of the Force from long ago. We thought was long since dead, but he sat out the Sith rule and chose his moment to return. Mm. Could be. It all sounds very plausible. I've not heard anyone go down that route with it yet about who. Snoke is we all got caught in that holding pattern around Plagueis didn't we yeah but I think there's something to if you step back one generation he could be Plagueis's master yeah yeah it could well be I mean that would explain how he can be nowhere near Rogue One mm. and still because he's already cut, done you know. yeah they exactly, have got these know. open threads that they need to tie together haven't they yeah the and Plagueis they need to do it 
They need to do it within a movie and it not be the, the central point of a movie. And it's a very simple way of tying Snoke and Ray's origins together and explaining yeah. it through the prism we're already familiar with, which is Anakin. So yeah. Anakin, we all know Anakin's a chosen one. If Luke says to Ray, Anakin was a chosen one, you're a chosen one. But mm. by the way, this giant big bad guy that we're really scared of, he's well, a chosen one as well. Maybe the chosen one isn't a one-off thing because a chosen one gets chosen whenever there is an imbalance in the force. Yes, maybe yeah. yeah and obviously. There, you know, it's not like a one. It's not like a you know once in a a lifetime thing. You know, once in a, once in the force thing. It's once whenever you need it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then if you look at Ray as well, because this is it's time both characters' origins or my my theories of both characters characters origins closely together now because mm. I was suggesting that the way Maz reacted to Ray's attraction to the crystal in the Skywalker lightsaber I was suggesting that she immediately Maz realized this is the girl we've been waiting for because that crystal called to her the last person that crystal called to was yes. Anakin a child Anakin, of the yeah. force so now it's calling to Ray and it's taken her on a false vision it's her quest to to take that crystal as her own and put it in her own weapon. Mm. And so going back a couple of episodes ago where we had a listener question about Luke's lightsaber or the Skywalker lightsaber, how did it get to Maz? I wonder mm. now whether she's the custodian that light, of that lightsaber deliberately and Maz might be a member of the Church of the Force. And Law Santec has been put on Jakku with the Church of the Force and told, watch yeah. over the girl and the lightsaber goes to Luke and he says when the person comes to find this because the crystal will call to them when they come for this that's the person you need to get to me mm. yeah, yeah maybe interesting. yeah I like, I like I love that I'm going to read through it later after we've finished and yeah well the Ray theory the Ray theory I've just put up on the site this week it's a fine-tuned version of my previous edition, with the including the knowledge I've picked up from Bloodline, which it really it took no extra. It, it really didn't affect it that much. It was just knowing that Luke and Ben were together at the time that Ray was on Jakku, altered mm. that that aspect of her development slightly. But maybe I'm going to write this Snoke um, thing up. Yeah, yeah, please do, because I'd like to be able to read it mm. in more kind of, you know, what's detail. the word? More detail yeah. and, you know, a, a more leisurely, process it more easily. Yeah, this is the first time I've had chance. Ch- I'd written these bullet points down. It's the first time I've had a chance to really verbalise it. But I I yeah. honestly think that there's something to this. We're, we're so caught up with the fact that he might be a character that exists or we might see him in another movie. But I really think that mm. he comes from a time before even Palpatine. Yeah. And it well, doesn't matter. Who was... Sorry, Mark. Who no, was Steve. the first... There, there must have been an Adam and Eve moment when there was the first Jedi and the first Sith. Well, Rob, you can probably speak to this more intelligently than me, even though a lot of it is legends now. Actually, no, I can't, because I'm not, I'm not really very familiar with the... Because uh, there's a Dawn of the Jedi series in Legends that deals with the first Force users, but uh, I haven't read it. Unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. But is sorry. it is it feasible? I mean, are we talking thousands of years before, or are we talking yeah. generations before? Oh, we're talking. Yeah, we're talking yeah. thousands of years before. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because I mean, talking... old, Repub- old Republic is, I think, four thousand years. So we're talking pre, yeah. like just just you know, a little well, while. The rule of two is yeah. a thousand years old when Palpatine comes into rule. The the rule of two. I, I know. I, I watched something on YouTube today. Uh, where I was doing a bit of research into this whole Civ thing and. They said that the rule of two was introduced a thousand years before Palpatine. So that would, that be, would um, be Darth Bane. Bane Darth... was, yeah, Bane was the, originally the introducer of the rule of two, and he is yeah. canon from Clone Wars. He is. So yeah. a thousand years before Phantom Menace, um, the Sith were a warring group of people, Good. and Bane said, yeah. "No, this now this exists amongst two people." Um, so that was that's been in place for a thousand years. I don't think they'd go that far back with Snoke, but they no. could because we've got a thousand year old character in Star Wars now mm. with Mars and yes, um, Yoda was oh, what? Hey, Maz Kanata. She's a thousand years old. Yeah, 
Is she really? Well, she runs. She ran the place for a thousand years. Wow. Yeah. So, what that the the the, 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 the temple? The, yeah, well, the um, well, castle thing. The castle, yeah. So she's a thousand wow. years old. So there's no reason why we can we don't have to put any constraints on Snoke's age in any way, shape, or form. Plus, mm-hmm. he's using the dark side to prolong his life because that's one of the skills that. Palpatine was celebrating when he was telling the yeah. story of Darth Plagueis the Wise. Yeah. Except and, and that Plagueis... he looks humanoid to me. Uh, but no. he's... Yeah, he is an alien and he's supposed to be sort of seven feet tall. That was from Neil Scanlon, yeah. the, the creature guy. That came out yeah. at the end of last year. So he is a bigger character than a regular human and he's pretty messed up as well. So it's going to be hard to pin him down. as. So It could be just a subtle difference. Like most mm-hmm. of the aliens in Star Wars are just a subtle variation on humanoid, aren't they? With like the Twi'leks with their long uh, leku and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so who knows? He could be an alien. He uses the force to prolong his life. He certainly used the force to bring himself back from whatever caused that damage to his head. Mm-hmm. Um, so my money, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm staking my whatever my reputation is on this. Snoke. Is Plagueis his old master, mm. and he Plagueis tried to kill him, and he used the Force to keep himself alive, prolong his life through the Sith rule. Yep. Once the Sith were destroyed, he chose his moment to start to rebuild, rebuild his yeah. his legacy, and the First Order grew out of all the machination, machinations. Now, remember, he's revealed himself publicly because Leia and Han refer to him as Snoke. In the Force mm-hmm. Awakens, so yeah, this is one thing that, I was thinking. Yeah, somewhere in that. And who was Palpatine's gap. master? Plagueis. Plagueis was Palpatine. Definitely, yeah. we know that from. Definitely, that came out yeah. in a tweet from Pablo Hidalgo recently. Yeah, yeah, that okay. Plagueis is dead. He was killed by by Snow. We think. Oh, no, killed, Pal- well, Plagueis was killed think- by Palpatine. Oh, uh, sorry, I, but Snoke possibly fought him. Because he rose up against Snoke and got his injury. Yes, that's. Yeah, that, I think that's Plagueis. Plagueis yeah, as they all to do. Yeah, as yeah. they all do. Yeah, the, uh, the way. Well, that, that maybe works. that's just a blip because because the Force has been around for potentially millions of years. Maybe this, you know, this whipper snapper uprising thing from your pad from your Padawan equivalent, or what else should say, mm. is kind of a new thing, and it's not been in the the dark side before, and they're having to deal with it. Hmm. In the, it's a phase rather than how it's always meant to be. Mm. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, it could be. You know, and it's kind of a blip in the whole sequence of how the dark side training works. Yeah. And they're trying to yeah. get their own balance from, from this. I quite like yeah. the dark side. I think I'll go dark side when I'm a Jedi. I'd just okay. ask a couple. Interesting. We'll have when to you're rescue Je- you. When yeah. you're a Jedi. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's Not still me. happening. I also think this poses quite an interesting question about Ray's destiny in these stories, because if think, uh, if if we've introduced Snoke as the first chosen one, and then mm-hmm. we we know that Anakin is our next chosen one, if she's yeah. our third, where's she going to go? I'm thinking she... I stick by my original theory that the the whole you know the whole thing will be about trying to kind of dangle her on the precipice and see which way she falls. Yeah, I think that's definitely the case. Yeah, I think that's interesting. Yeah, okay. I like the angles though. Yeah, I'm going to write that up this week. That'll be uh, this week's Star Wars Insights. I think looking at cool. who he could be nice. and pitching it out there to see. Uh, nice. See who agrees with me. So if you're listening to this on Monday, the chances are head over to talkstarwars.co.uk and there will be a. Uh, there will be a Star Wars Insights on there about my, my new Snoke theory. Okay. Okay. Anything else we want to throw in here before we wrap this up? I've got a really no. quick one to add, actually. Um, yeah, so this is this is like instant. This is happening. I've seen this happen today, right? So this is, you know, up, as up-to-date as we can possibly get with the Star Wars news, given the way we record. Mm-hmm. Um, there, is a, there is a picture or a video doing the rounds which claims to have leaked the Episode Eight title. Oh really? Yeah. So uh, here's a question, right? Because I want—I'm trying to work out if it's cobblers. Um, is celebration in any form going on right now? No. 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 That's what I thought, right? So allegedly, 
so the, um, let me find the original. There's a. Uh, I found it on a Facebook page, but I'm going to go to uh, Reddit because that's where I find most of my stuff. Um, right, so Celebration is supposedly so it's, it's basically it's it looks like some sort of pic some sort of poster frame from celebration europe okay and so this is kind of going to be vague spoilers if true so it's, it's got the usual caveat if it's true uh the title for episode eight will be all of the resistance hmm. mm. so too much how, of a giveaway well you say yeah. that empire strikes back as a giveaway yeah, but the Empire striking back is a bit more ambiguous than the fall of the resistance. That's true. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah they're putting I all still their money like on. The, I still like the Dark Side Rises. Mm. Yeah. There's one on Slash Film that says the rise of the First Order. Yeah. I don't know. That one seems too long winded. Yeah, um, plus, not, we've, sure had, we've had the rise of the First Order in Bloodline. Yeah. I'm still. Um, yeah. pe- I'm Spoilers. still wondering when they're going to bring a bloody trailer out for Rogue One, a yeah. full-on trailer. Yeah, too right. I mean, we're we're um, coming down to it now, in the words of... Uh... Celebration, mate. There'll be a full one at Celebration. That sounds okay. totally plausible to me. I mean, they did yeah. one at Celebration before for Episode 7, right? They did the second teaser. Yes, yeah. Yeah. The one that made everyone cry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That, that would, I, I think that'll almost certainly happen, yeah. Another bit of um, Star Wars stroke Avatar news. We do like to slip onto Avatar occasionally. Uh, you know, those of you in the know will know Avatar moved from, what is it, 15 to 16, then 16 to 17. I think now it's 17 to 18 because James Cameron said, look, I do not want to go up against Star Wars and I and I should imagine they feel the same way. Right, yeah. So we're 18. Now looking... yeah. yeah, 18 at Christmas. That um, Han Solo has moved to May. In 2018, so that seems like a safe place for Avatar yeah. now. And I, I wonder if they've actually been in communication about this. Could, Could be. well be. Yeah, I mean they it don't want to cannibalise each other's audiences, do they? Yeah, exactly. No, no. It's so, I mean, in fact, I was reading if Avatar makes half, if Avatar two makes half of what Avatar made, it would be number five all time top films. Yeah, grossing films. <laughs> so it's, it's, it yeah, they've got survive. a safe bet. Yeah, because okay. he's doing. He literally is writing is writing them all and also filming all of the mocap and everything in advance for all four films. That's mad. What a workload. That's ridiculous. But it's kind of... The trouble is people are concerned that... This is really after Dark Side stuff, but the people are concerned, and I kind of get it, that if they're doing all that side now, how much tech stuff is going on now? And will it mean that by 2023, when the last one comes out, it's really that dated. actually it's, it's dated? And I'm not sure. I think the mocap thing is probably safe to do any time because it's. I I don't think the tech will move on that much for mocap. No, once they've got all the data from the actors in their performance capture suits, they can apply the animation to it and render yeah. it all later, can't they? Yeah. It's just using the architecture that's already in place. But, mm. Yeah, interesting. Okay, though. right. Let's wrap this one up then. So. Um, Alrighty. Thank you for listening to Talk Star Wars again this week. If you'd like to support what we do here, then head over to talkstarwars.co.uk forward slash support, where you can become a TSW sponsor by giving as little as £1 per month securely via PayPal. Um, failing that, you can support us by just simply liking and following us on our varied social networks, including Facebook and Twitter. Um, guys, where can people find you between shows this week? Uh, go on, you go. On, you go first, Rob. All right, mate. Um, I'm on Twitter at Rob Rob Wade Vision. Uh, that's my Twitter where I do most of my posting. I also have a blog which I run with a couple of friends called Emotionally Fourteen. There's um, I tweet out about it all the time. There's also a YouTube page, a Facebook page, a blog, a written blog that occasionally puts some stuff up there. Most of it's kind of a central hub for all the stuff that I do, um, and obviously talk Star Wars. I'm on um, YouTube only, but I run a, I run a channel on there called Calistine, C-A-L-A-S-T-E-I-N, Calistine. And if you guys can subscribe and like the videos, it all goes to charity to preserve and save the rainforest, which is uh, vital if we want to breathe while we're watching Star Wars. 
Indeed. You can also find all those links in the description to this uh, podcast that take you to our landing page where all our contact details are, including those YouTube channels. Um, don't forget to leave us a nice review on iTunes. And if you haven't done so already, if you have, why not leave another one? Uh, thanks again, and we will see you guys next week. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. <laughs>